Hey, what's up? Hello, my name is Emma, and today I'm going to be giving you guys some feminist fiction book recommendations. If you did not know, March is International Women's Month, so I wanted to create a video talking about some books about women and written by women that I really adore. I have some young adult books, some adult, I have books that are more intent on like spreading awareness for feminism and educating readers and others that are a bit more nuanced and it's not like the main focus of the story, but there are some themes there that I think are really important to explore. The first book I'd like to recommend is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. If you guys follow me, on Twitter at Emma Books, you would know that this is like an absolute new favorite book of all time for me. This book takes place in the 60s and 70s. It follows a singer-songwriter named Daisy Jones and a band called The Six that wants to be the most famous band in the world. And this book is told through an oral history, through interviews of what happened when the band first got together. It details their success and it also explains why they broke up. It is truly incredible. I listened to this audiobook twice in like the span of a week because I was so consumed with love for the story and I just could not part with it. From the beautiful prose, the remarkable characters, and their unique relationships to one another, as well as such like a thrilling plot, it is truly one of my favorite books I've ever read and I could not recommend it enough. But beyond all of that, I just really love this story's take on feminism and the way that these three women, or even four women in this novel, just interact and support each other it was just so inspiring to read. It's a story of strong women who discover what they want for themselves in life and how they are resilient enough to not let others take that away from them. All of the women in the story are super well developed and multifaceted and Daisy Jones and the Six just exemplifies what I want the world to see when they look at women. It is beautiful in every sense of the word and I cannot recommend it enough. While we're talking about Taylor Jenkins Reid and how much I absolutely adore her as an author, I of course have to mention The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This is another historical fiction novel following a woman named Evelyn Hugo and it basically details her life story as a young girl entering Hollywood and becoming one of the world's biggest stars. Like Daisy Jones, Evelyn Hugo is just so good. I feel like words can't describe how amazing it is. <laughs> I feel like most people go into this book with the intention of finding out like who is Evelyn Hugo and why does she have have these seven husbands but that's why I also think the title of this book is so brilliant because it's like not at all about Evelyn's husbands and it's more about her as a person. It's about a bisexual woman of color living the life that she wants to lead while also having to make sacrifices in order to achieve her goals. Something else I love about this novel is that Evelyn Hugo is incredibly flawed. Like I know here on booktube we are always fawning over Evelyn Hugo and how amazing she is but she is like intrinsically flawed and makes a lot of mistakes and there's so much readers don't agree with when you're reading her story. And I think that's so important because while the feminist themes in this novel are a little bit more understated compared to some of the other books that I have to recommend, I feel like feminism is like always presented as this like pure virtuous thing and like you always have to be doing the right thing for the greater good at every moment. And in truth, people just aren't like that and we do make mistakes and we are all flawed and I just think Evelyn captures that so perfectly. Like yeah, she's a powerful woman who knows her worth but she also messes up and doesn't always do the right thing and she's just so realistic in that sense that I just had a pleasure getting to know Evelyn Hugo's life story and every moment reading this book was just a treasure for me. I have not delved into the rest of Taylor Jenkins Reid's works yet but I'm definitely planning to because between these two books she's become one of my like absolute all-time favorite authors and she's written some of the women that I just love and will carry with me for the rest of my life. The next book I'd like to recommend to you guys is Moxie by Jennifer Matu. This is a book that I actually have a spoiler free review on so if you want to hear a little bit more of my in-depth thoughts on this novel you can check of the review that I've linked in the description. This story follows a girl named Vivian Carter who is frankly fed up with the sexism and misogyny that goes unaddressed in her school, so she decides to create a feminist zine inspired by the 90s riot girl movement that she hands out anonymously in the bathroom of the school to hopefully empower some of her classmates to challenge a lot of what the school's values seem to be. I just adored Moxie so much. It's really funny because the reason I was like intent on picking up Moxie is 
is because there was this review that came from like a, a very prolific site that kind of just missed the message of the story and was honestly a little sexist and I kind of just wanted to read it despite it and I'm so glad I did because I was surprised with how much I really loved this novel. I particularly think Moxie is really great for young readers and for people who are maybe just starting to delve into the world of feminist fiction and really learn more about the core values of this movement and how to implement it into your real life. Like this is a book I definitely think should be a part of like a required reading for a high school English class not only because I think YA is so much more relatable to teens because it's about people like them who are going through the same issues but I just feel like it sort of hits all the marks on what I would want the youth to know about feminism. I have a soft spot for teen activism stories because I just really love watching young people be passionate about an issue and really make efforts to change their community and Moxie is just full of that but another thing I really appreciated from this novel is that it really is just about like breaking down the cliques in school and realizing that in feminism we are all united under one mission and that really has the power to bring people together and make friends and connections that we might not have otherwise. This is kind of a minor thing but you see all of Vivian's zines that she hands out in the book and I just love the artwork and the writing. I believe it was all done by the author and it's just it's cute. It's a cute freaking book and we should be able to appreciate a book that is adorable but also very informative and important. I just really love Moxie and I love Jennifer Ma too. I have an interview with her on my channel. I got to interview her after I read Moxie and it was just a big gush fest for myself. So if you want to hear us talk about things more like Moxie and feminism, I'll link that interview down below. I love Moxie. I will always love Moxie. I actually got my mother to read Moxie and she really enjoyed it too. So this book is one that transcends generations. If you're looking for something cute and lighthearted that's also empowering and has a lot of feminist themes, Moxie is the book for you. The next book I'd like to talk about is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. The Poet X is a pretty highly acclaimed debut novel. It is written in verse, meaning it sort of mirrors the structure of poetry, and it follows a girl named Ziamara who is Haitian and Dominican. It's kind of one of those slice of life stories that details Ziamara's different experiences as a woman in the world, as a woman of color, as someone who comes from a very religious household where she's beginning to confront her beliefs and question them. I was so nervous going into the Poet X because I don't like poetry whatsoever and I had never read a book in verse before. So I thought it was going to be totally out of my comfort zone, but I listened to the audiobook, which was also fantastic. It's narrated by the author, and I'd highly recommend you listen to the audiobook if you can. But I was so pleasantly surprised with how much I really related to Ziamara. Like, I went into it feeling like I was going to be reading a book about someone with a different experience for myself because I'm not a woman of color, but I just related on such a deep level to everything she was talking about, um, being like a, a young teen who is sexualized by society and is dealing with unwanted attention from men. I just felt so seen. Like, I had been carrying so many emotions about these experiences that I've had due to being a woman in the world, and Ziomara just explained them, and it made me feel so heard. It is a short, sweet story that does deal with some heavier emotional issues, but also just celebrates how wonderful it is to be a woman, and really, I feel, helps young people know and identify their worth. And it also is written in one of the most beautiful writing styles I've ever had the pleasure of reading. Like, Elizabeth Acevedo is so freaking talented and I cannot wait to read her follow-up novel, but I was just such a huge fan of The Poet X. It has received so much high praise, like five-star reviews everywhere, lots of awards and nominations, and it is as incredible as everyone says. The next book I would like to recommend to you guys is The Nowhere Girls by Amy Reed. This book follows three main characters. The first is Grace, who has recently moved into a new home, which used to belong to a girl that was gang raped by a lot of the football players in the community and because no one believed her and she received no support her family moved away to try and distance themselves from it. Our next main character is Rosina who comes from a Mexican immigrant family and she is forced to work in her mother's shop when she really wants to go out and be a rock star and find a girlfriend. And then we also follow Erin who is on the autism spectrum and has anxiety and she is becoming increasingly frustrated with her mother who always acts like she knows what's best for Erin without actually actually consulting her. So it is about these three girls who decide to create an anonymous group called the Nowhere Girls that is essentially a place where the girls in their school can come to vent their frustrations about the sexism and especially rape culture.
culture that exists in their community. The Nowhere Girls was a great read. It follows these three super dynamic characters that are all very well developed and diverse in their own respective ways and it is about them like transcending the boundaries of where they come from and all of their different identities and really forming together to make a difference. It's a very inclusive novel meaning it is open to different perspectives on the feminist movement. Um, it can be very critical at times and it can be very empowering and I just feel it fosters a lot of healthy discussion about the varying different experiences of women. Like Moxie I feel like this story is a great introduction to feminism but I also feel like there's still so much more value to be grasped from it as opposed to just like the main points of feminism that books like this should get across. This is one of the books that I would mark as having a very strong trigger warning for rape and sexual assault because they're massive themes in the story but it's not done in a way that's for like shock value or plot twist like it's a central part of the story because it aims to discuss all of the many different implications that come from the way that we handle these issues in society and I just feel overall The Nowhere Girls is so great. It's super underrated not enough people have read it and I would highly recommend if you haven't. Next feminist book on my recommendations list is Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. This story follows a Puerto Rican girl named Juliet who is flying across the country to spend the summer as an intern for her favorite feminist author. I think this book is a fantastic exploration into the world of intersectional feminism which like if we're honest is the only real kind of feminism. It's a feminist novel that doesn't only explain what it means to be a woman but also what it means to be a woman of color as well as a queer woman of color. Being completely honest, Julia Takes a Breath is probably my least favorite book out of everything on my recommendations list. I believe I gave it like 3.5 out of 5 stars. Number one, I just didn't connect with the writing style. It wasn't up to my personal standards of what I like to read, but also the main reason was that I absolutely hated a character in this novel who is like rightfully hated and written for you to hate them. So like it was done well on the author's part, but it didn't help that I was just incredibly frustrated all throughout the story and I feel like this character didn't really get the consequences that were warranted at the end of the story so I would have liked to see a little bit more of that. But what I love about Juliet Takes a Breath is that it really is the story about a young girl discovering feminism for the first time and making sense of what that means to her in her life. She comes from this conservative little family and she is suddenly thrust into a very progressive world and is able to really think for herself for the first time and make decisions about what is right for her and what she believes is right in the world. I loved the healthy criticism of the feminist movement and how it really explains where we are lacking in attention and how different areas of feminism and different populations have different needs that need to be served by this movement in order for it to truly benefit all people. So while there were some things that I didn't necessarily vibe with while reading the story, there was also so much value to it and there were a lot of really great scenes about Juliet just like coming into her body as a woman and, and understanding her place in the world, her worth, and learning when she can really stand up for herself. And for that reason, like, Juliet's character development was beautiful and super, super exciting to read. So although it's, like, not my favorite book in the entire world, I would still highly recommend it if you're looking for some super special and unique and criminally underrated feminist novels. The next book I'd like to recommend is Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. This is an older YA novel. I believe this was published in like 2011 and it took me until this year to read it but I was so in love with it. It is essentially a feminist retelling of Lord of the Flies. It follows this group of beauty queens that are on their way to this national competition when their plane crash lands and they are the only survivors on a deserted island. Firstly, this is a very funny book. I feel like funny books just do not get enough attention in the booktube world and this book like had me laughing out loud. It was a super fun time. But a big surprise that came along with this book is how much I really appreciated the characters. It does follow like a, a decently big cast of maybe like 12 main characters and they're all young girls who are just trying to fumble their way through survival on this island. It's very diverse which is super important when we're talking about feminist novels because we can't only view one women's perspective on the world. There's a black main character, an Indian main character, there's a deaf main character, there's a lesbian main character, and there's also a trans main character too. So not only do we have these discussions about their different identities and what that means for them to live in this society, but also like they have their own character interactions and they make friendships and they have enemies and it's just, it's super super fun. That's like the main feeling I get when I think about Beauty Queens. This book just like got globally bigger than I ever expected and personally that was one of the things I didn't like about this novel. It just took this like weird economic term that I wasn't really 
really feeling and I was way more focused on these storylines among these girls and their relationships and what they are doing on the island. So it is very entertaining and humorous which I think are big selling points of the novel but it also delves into a lot of really important discussions that I did not expect going into this novel like about colorism and tokenism. It talks about transphobia and disability and sexism but it also talks about empowering women, standing up for yourself, fighting for what you believe in and making the most of yourself and those are themes that I feel are really really important for us to capture in young adult novels. Beauty Queens is an overall really great book. I'd highly recommend it if you have not picked it up yet. I feel like just a lot of people don't really see what goes into this book. They view it as like oh an all girls Lord of the Flies retelling but it really is so much more. And the last book I'd like to recommend to you guys is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. The Female of the Species is a pretty well regarded feminist novel in the young adult community and now that I've read it not once but twice in like the last two months I can absolutely confirm all of the high praise. This story follows a girl named Alex whose sister was brutally murdered years ago and her killer was never convicted so it has really transformed the way that Alex reacts to the world. We also follow a boy named Jack who comes from a poor family in the community and is the star athlete and star student of his school because he needs to get a good scholarship in order to get out. And our final main character is nicknamed PK because she is the preacher's kid and she is currently going through a rough breakup after her boyfriend has cheated on her. So it follows these three main characters who have grown up in this small town together but they only start forming relationships now and it is kind of fueled by their different reactions and perceptions of sexual assault and rape culture. One of the things I love about this story is that it is a contemporary that reads like a thriller without actually crossing into the mystery thriller genre. There is just this overall feeling of suspense and tension while reading that mimics that of a lot of thrillers I've read while still being like a contemporary story and so I just found that brilliant and very interesting for me as a reader. This book is so short but I feel like it does a fantastic job of exploring so many different topics such as poverty, grief, sexism, rape culture, sexual assault, etc teen sexuality. There's just so much substance to this book. There's so much to unpack and that's the main reason why once I finished it I just feel like I didn't fully process everything and a few weeks later it was like I, d I just have to read it again to make sure I got it all. <laughs> this novel has such a unique and necessary story but it also has these extremely well-developed and well-rounded characters that subverse these stereotypes that I feel like the book really toys with and tries to transform our view of. It really explores the strong solidarity among women and tells the story of how you may not like someone but how like when you're a girl you show up for other girls and I just loved seeing that message in this story. I definitely feel the female of the species is a one-of-a-kind story. I do feel like a lot of people have read it which is why I left it till the end of this video but if you haven't managed to get your hands on it yet I'd really really recommend you read it. I just think it is so unlike almost any book I've read before and it's one that I will definitely treasure my experience reading. So that concludes my feminist fiction recommendations. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video because I've been wanting to talk about some of these books for so long. I just really love feminism. I love talking about it. I love celebrating women, especially these incredible women authors and their incredible women main characters. I love what the women of the past have done for me and the way that they have enabled me to live my life and I also love that the tools and knowledge they've provided me with in order to continue making this world a more equitable place. So in the comments below I would love to know your thoughts on any of these novels any books that you would recommend to me that have some strong feminist themes or just any feelings, thoughts, or, or especially great ones that you have about feminism. I would love to hear them in the comments below. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new video. Bye!